Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and today we're going to be talking about bootstraps. Uh, I've had people ask questions about um, why do you need bootstraps, what's the point of a bootstrap, or how do I wear a bootstrap. And I see a lot of goalies wear them kind of wrong and we'll kind of go over that as well. So, bootstraps are kind of becoming a thing of the past. Uh, a lot of pads now have an, op an option to not include them. Um, a lot of pads come stock without anything on and it's kind of an option to get it on. For example, the 2X Pro doesn't come with a bootstrap connected. It's one of the options. I uh, chose to have it included as something I could put on, but I don't use it. I believe that's the same with the 2S Pro. Um, so a lot of companies are kind of moving away from what was kind of traditional. And because goalies are wearing their pads a bit differently and kind of technology has evolved, evolved a bit. So first of all, there are many different types of bootstraps. There are these plastic fake leather ones CCM uses, which I did a how to take out video. Um, there's these nylon ones that are just, that have a Velcro, which ba uh, Brian use, uses. And then there's the leather ones, which Paso and Warrior used to use and are still available. I think like Vaughn uses an interesting one where it's, it's almost like uh, this material and it slides in, you clamp it down. Um, a different Vaughn one was stretchy in the middle of it with leather on the other sides. So, companies are kind of doing different things. Um, so I wouldn't say push the bootstrap game forward, but to kind of just use different technologies and ideas. Uh, I put these here just so you could have an idea of all the different kind of bootstraps. Um, so the Paso one is, again, it has a, a bootstrap, which you can remove. Um, I didn't remove it because they're demo pads and I'll be sending them back and I didn't want to lose that piece. So I just wear them very loose. Uh, these Warriors, I always put a bootstrap in it. I use it to carry them. I also use this one to carry the Vaughn ones. So to me, personally, the only reason to use a bootstrap now is to carry the pads. Um, so it's really nice when companies include little hooks and loops so you don't have to carry the pads by bootstrap because um, I don't use bootstraps anymore. So looking at all these, we'll go over them really quick. So that white one was from uh, the my optic pads, which is here and which I removed. Obviously the leather on the Paso leather on the old Warrior G2s, um, removable one on my Bauer 1Xs, exact same one on the Optic as the Genetics, zero on my Vapor, and the one I took out obviously on the E-Flex. So, there are still people who use bootstraps. Everything's falling down on me. Um, okay, so there are still people who use bootstraps. Again, I am not one of them. And, but I had to use them um, in certain scenarios. So when I got these Bauer 1Xs, I had some issues with strapping at the very beginning. Um, it did not have a bootstrap in it, and it has this stretch of, like a little bit of stretch to it, toe lace system. Um, and I, the way I was strapping these pads was simply too tight. And I was trying to get, or yeah, so the way I was strapping them was a bit too tight, and it wasn't acting the way I wanted it to kind of drop down the butterfly and stuff like that. So I had to do a few things. One of those things was when I wore them really tight, the pad wouldn't rotate back. So when I wore the inner CRS strap, which I don't have on this one anymore, but connects connects down here, comes out to the calf. When I wore that really tight, which is how I thought I would want it to wear them, um, the pad wouldn't rotate back. In my stance, I was like this. I'd go into the butterfly like this. And when I would stand up, my pad would be like this and my toe would be pointing forward. Um, it, what my pad wasn't rotating back. Now, what I decided to do, or what I uh, did was I put on my Warrior bootstraps into my Bauer pad. And the reason I did that um, was because it acted almost as a hinge. So, or sorry, not a, a hinge, but a pulley. So when I would go down on this, let's get rid of this pad for a second. So when I would go down with the bootstrap in place, with the skate going through the heel, just like this one. Um, when I would go back up, it would basically slide along that strap or hold the, the pad with, um, like it would slide along the strap, so it would move a little bit in this position, and then it would slide all through that hole, and it would always end up keeping the pad facing straight on. Um, so it was a solution to my rotation issues in that sense. It wasn't tight, I wore it very loose, but just having that one little like anchor point and it was, again, very loose anchor point. That pad rotated back perfectly fine. Now, when I ended up taking out the CRS strap, ignore that, I didn't use it. When I took out the CRS strap and just used this strap, 
I found that with the bootstrap, it was like the, the bootstrap was kind of bothering me. It was kind of getting in the way, pulled it off, pad worked perfectly without it. Haven't looked back on those, never even put it on for the two X's. When I first used these genetic pads, um, I ended up, I kept landing too far down here. Um, so I thought the pads were almost too big. They aren't big, they're actually perfect size. But basically what was happening is it was my first time ever using one of these straps. Like these bungee cords, I always had laces before or uh, Brian's old different smart strap system, which like it was very obvious it would go through the toe and then the middle and then up. So the very first time I did this, I only put this strap through the toe, which caused my skate to be too far off the pad. So instead of being right up here, it was like out here when I would go down because this was basically too loose and it wasn't holding my, my leg in place. When I would drop down, my skate would be out where my hand is and the pad would kind of fall off my skate and I would end up at the bottom of the pad right there. So my first solution of that was I have to tighten the bootstrap. And so I did, I had the bootstrap on at the time, I tightened it so my uh, skate wouldn't kind of fall out of its place and my knee would land in the right spot, which it did. But that led to another issue. Now, my problem with bootstraps right now is they put too much stress on my ankles and they don't let your leg kind of, your foot to kind of float freely. So when you try to move your foot on an angle and push down, the bootstrap can, can fight against that. So it really bothers me. Um, so when I did that, I actually really kind of hurt my ankle for a few weeks because of that pressure from that strap of holding this in place. Um, I then figured out, okay, I gotta just tighten that, put it through the middle, everything works fine, pull the bootstrap out, pad's perfect. Um, so again, bootstraps do have sort of a purpose, um, but they don't serve my purpose and what I need. One of the great things that bootstraps, a lot of skates have these on now, is with these tabs. So if you buy a skate that's a little bit too big, or sorry, a pad that's a little bit too big, and there's reasons for that. Um, one is if you're growing and you're not fully grown yet, you always generally buy pads that are a little bit too big so you can grow into them. With that said, with the bootstrap, you can do some things to make the pad fit a little bit bigger than it really is. Um, these little tabs come in a, in like, they really become helpful when that's the case. So what you end up doing is you end up running the bootstrap through the tab and it doesn't have to be super tight, but what that will do is instead of having the, pad, the bootstrap running down here, it pulls the pad up a bit on your foot. And what that does is like how I had to tighten this so my foot, my leg wouldn't fall down. It ends up uh, making the pad ride a bit differently on your leg. And that way you can get basically more life out of the pad because it makes the pad ride up higher. So it's the opposite of what mine were or opposite of what mine did. So when I put the bootstrap on, it made the pad ride lower because it kept it closer to my foot because I did it tighter. It pulls the pad kind of up on your heel so it will sit like this a little bit off of your, your foot. And the, the benefits of that are when you're too tall for this. So if you end up landing here, it puts your knee a little bit down there so you can get a little bit more life out of your pads. Now obviously I would say buy a fitting pad, but if you have two months left in your season and you just outgrew your pads, using a bootstrap behind the ankle will help out for that. Um, so that's always kind of a nice piece of a bootstrap and what can kind of help. If you watch a lot of NHL goalies, um, I find a lot of NHL goalies use that system where they do use the bootstrap on the heel. And one of the people who started it was Henry Lundqvist. And it's actually called a Lundy loop because of that. Um, and basically, when the NHL new regulations or pad size regulations came into play, um, a lot of goalies lost thigh rise size. And they're to kind of compensate for that, because they now have a smaller pad, but their game depended on their thigh rise. If you watch Henry Lundqvist, his game really depends on his thigh rise and his pads being like on the ice. So what he did and what he does was he would basically use that strap behind his heel and it would push the pad kind of up so he could wear it looser and he would end up landing lower on here but he would get more thigh rise out of it. So his knee would normally land here, he now starts going down there, we get more thigh rise, still now he's in a smaller pad but he still gets that thigh rise coverage because it's coming off his boot. Now his boot might be exposed but he's not really worried about that. So it's covering, like you're getting more thigh rise and a bit more height out of the pad. That might be a little bit too small, or in his case, doesn't totally work for the way he wants to play. Um, so again, that's another usage of the bootstrap. Personally, I don't really need that because 
I buy pads that fit me. I'm not going to grow anymore. I'm old. Um, but some people want that advantage and benefit. I do not need that. Oh, and when I mentioned how it's useful to carry things, these pads have no hooks or loops to carry uh, your straps with. And since the only things I have on here are Velcro or these elastics, which I'm not going to hook together and carry, um, I have to use a pad bag. So I use a Bauer uh, 1S pad bag to carry these around because I can't attach them anywhere. Um, whereas Bauer has some nice things like this hook. Brian's has little hooks on there so you can actually carry them. It's just a, gr a gr little gripe, but that's one reason why I would keep them on the Paso because that way I can actually carry them easy without worrying about any of the Velcro. Okay, so here are two pads with, one's a bootstrap, one is without a bootstrap. Now this one isn't even that tight. I mean, it's still a bit tight, but it kind of shows the idea of what I'm talking about when I say it can put too much um, like pressure and kind of resistance on the ankle compared to without one. So obviously the Bauer pad doesn't have one. You can see the leg, the foot is totally free to move around. So I'll kind of go over there and show that. Normally, obviously, I should have seen that coming. So normally, like your foot is right here, right? And because of these stretchy elastics now, you can easily, uh, like with my actual weight on it, this will bend down and will stretch down so my skate will actually touch the ice. And then with your leg, so it can move like this very easily and freely without any issues. So when you've got to push off, it bends down easy, pad kind of comes with you a little bit, and you push, no issues with that there. And as well, and this stretchy elastic will give you enough uh, tension and support so the pad won't come flying off because it just pulls back, but at the same time will give you enough stretch so you can really bend your foot without having any issues. Great design in my opinion and why I prefer not to have a bootstrap anymore because this, the, like the bungee and the stretchy laces kind of remove the reasons to actually use it to keep your skate in place. Okay, so when we go over here, you can see how the, the skate is not kind of falling down and it's not pushing down. So it's kind of normal position is right here. Now, just to prove this isn't really getting in the way, um, this still has the elastic toe system. So this pad does not need this bootstrap at all. I've kept it on again because the demo pad and it's easier to carry. When you go to push off, you now have this holding your skate from really moving anywhere. Um, so as you can see, well, hopefully you can see, the toe isn't touching the ice. Now that's normally stretchy enough so the toe can touch the ice. But with the bootstrap, it's kind of being held too close everywhere and it's kind of annoying. Um, but this will also, like in my experience, doing this would hold up your ankle too much on like right here. And that would basically, like every time you went to push off, you'd feel a bit of strain. And my big issue is when you're in the reverse VH. So your legs flat, all your weight's coming this way. And you, there's like weight on your ankle basically because you're pivoted and like your, your actual weight is about right here. Um, I found with this, it wouldn't allow your ankle to move as freely and it would like give me ankle issues. So this is a like medium tightness. When I wear these straps, I basically go to here and do them up. So they're totally useless. Um, and they don't really do anything that they like anything to actually help because again they're so loose they're kind of just sitting there it might give a little bit of rotation help i don't really need it with these pads these pads are good enough without that but i wear it really loose now i see a lot of people especially kids crank this wear it like that and then i'm like how aren't your your ankles absolutely destroyed i have a feeling it's because they're kids and they're not old like me um so I would never do a bootstrap this tight. You always have to leave some slack in there so you can move this down easier. You can see how like this leg, can't, this can't really push down because it's too tight. Um, so always keep this loose if you are wearing the bootstrap, but at the same time, think about why you're wearing a bootstrap. Now, if you have a last or not non-elastic laces, so you have normal uh, toe, like a normal toe strap, which is normal lacing um, that doesn't stretch. And usually you have to put uh, some slack in it so your toe can actually touch the ice without like having issues that's when a bootstrap kind of comes in handy because it will keep your let your foot kind of where it should be because the slack allows your your skate to kind of fall off the pad this will kind of hold in place but never needs to be that tight so never do that um, so while we're here i will kind of show off the idea behind this strap right so this bootstrap will come out of here and a lot of pads now are putting bootstraps actually up here and down like over here so it doesn't come down and up. So this is done easier. 
Um, but you can see when you do that, now when you look at where the pad is, and I'll kind of move this in a second. So this isn't crazy tight anymore, but when you look at where the pad's sitting, it's, it used to be up higher, right? It used to be right there. Now it's naturally sitting out here, so the pad sits higher, and you get that extra height out of the pad. Um, so that about sums it up for the bootstrap. Actually, just to show one more thing, and without the bootstrap, you can see how this skate fits and it's much more free. And again, because this is elastic, it's not gonna pull off enough. It's gonna stay there fine, and I think that's fine. This pad is fine without a bootstrap in its entirety, but again, it is what it is. So, um, I think that's about it for this video. One thing I will kind of show is, so this is what I'm talking about with toe slack. So these are stretchy laces, um, but I didn't put this in. As someone who was using these pads put this in. And so these are stretchy laces, but they put a little bit of toe slack on there um, for themselves. Again, it's all personal preference. I recommend if you aren't using stretchy laces, put some slack in there to give your ankle a bit of like uh, the ability, the toe, the ability to go down on the ice and actually reach the bottom of the ice without really straining yourself. Yeah, I think it will help your ankles in the long run, um, but everything's personal preference. Just watch out for any strain there. So I think that's about it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful in terms of bootstraps and why they're used and why you might not want to use them. Again, personally, I suggest not to use them if you have the stretchy laces of any sort. I'm a fan of not using them, but people, everyone likes their own thing, so I'm not going to say you're doing it wrong, um, but it's just personal preference. So yeah, so hopefully this video was really helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments below, and if it was helpful, that'd be really good. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, more subscribers and followers I have, easier it is for me to get gear and do videos like this. Um, as well as, if you ever purchased these equipment because of one of my videos, please reach out to the manufacturer, let them know. Helps me get them, uh, helps me get on their radar again, so I can get some demo stuff and so I can do videos and make more content. Uh, the other thing, follow me on Instagram because I make a lot of content for small, I, I do, or I post a lot of things for like smaller videos or smaller clips that aren't really like big enough for an actual full YouTube thing, like YouTube video and stuff like that. Uh, so you might get some info and helpful info that way as well. So again, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.